Okay, Google, turn on my ceiling fan light. This is the 60 inch Greenhaven smart ceiling fan. And today we're gonna install it and go over all its quirks and features. There's no quirks, just features. Stay tuned, let's give it a goo. Hey people of YouTube, today we're covering the complete installation of the 60 inch Greenhaven smart ceiling fan by Home Decorators Collection. If you found this video, you might be stuck in your own installation and you're looking for some help, we're here to do just that. We've already unpacked the fan, we're going to go over all the parts and install this thing step by step all the way to turning it on and everything in between, so stick with us and we'll get you through it. If you want to, you can use the links down below and fast forward to each individual step of the process and that way you don't have to watch the whole video. But if you found the video helpful, please click like and subscribe afterwards and that'll help other people find it as well. This fan offers a variety of control options, such as with the included handheld remote control, via the Hubspace app on your smart device like a phone or a tablet, or via voice control once integrated with Google Assistant or Alexa. It's an indoor fan, and it's a dual mount fan, meaning that it can be hung from a standard flat ceiling with the included downrod, or it can be hung from a higher angled ceiling with an extension downrod sold separately. The fan features a powerful five-speed DC motor for increased energy efficiency, and a six-way color-changing LED light kit that ranges from 2700K warm white all the way up to 6500K daylight deluxe, so blending with your home's current lighting scheme won't be an issue. Now before we get started, just a couple of notes. You want to make sure that the electricity is turned off at the breaker box and at the wall switch. If you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, please consult with a licensed electrician. Another note is if you're hanging this fan where there was just a light fixture on your ceiling, you need to make sure that the outlet box is clearly marked acceptable for fan support. If not, you'll need to swap that out before beginning. Now included in the box is this quick start guide. The quick start guide has the QR code that you'll need when setting up the Hubspace app on your phone. And if that's missing, the QR code is also located on the receiver and inside the battery compartment of the remote control. One other note, when installing the blade arms on this fan, You'll insert the screwdriver through these little slots to give you access to the screws to attach the blade arms. And we'll cover this in detail during the installation. So as you can see here, we've already unpacked the fan and we've opened up the manual to the parts page. We're just going to go over all the parts to make sure we have everything before beginning and that way we don't get stuck along the way. So first up, you have the slide on mounting bracket. That comes pre-installed inside the canopy with a decorative ring on the bottom and we'll show you in the first step how to remove that to get started. You'll have the frosted glass light shade, the decorative motor collar cover, you'll have five reversible blades, and five AccuArm blade arms. These have captive screws, which makes installation easier. You'll have the LED module, the ball and downrod assembly, the fan motor, the light kit pan, you'll have a hardware pack. This has the plastic wire nuts, the hanger and locking pin, and the blade attachment screws. And if you're installing this with an extension down rod, you'll have some extension wiring. You'll also have the remote and receiver. Now just a couple of notes, the remote does include a wall cradle for convenient storage when it's not in use, and the batteries are included, and the remote also has the reverse function to reverse the direction of the fan. And just a couple of notes about the receiver, this white Wi-Fi antenna must be located outside of the canopy once the installation is complete and that'll help it communicate with your Wi-Fi network and it is only compatible with 2.4 gigahertz networks it's not compatible with a 5 gigahertz network so just some tools we're going to need you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver we like to have a short one and a long one on hand you need a flathead screwdriver you may need some wire cutters and strippers we like to have a line voltage tester on hand just to make sure the wires aren't live before beginning. You'll need some electrical tape and of course a ladder. So we have everything here. We're ready to begin. Let's do this. The mounting bracket comes pre-installed inside the canopy with the decorative ring attached. To remove the mounting bracket, first pull off the decorative ring. It's magnetic, so it just pulls off. You'll notice an alignment post at the base of the canopy. You'll need to loosen but not remove the two screws in the base of the canopy enough so that that alignment post can exit that hole. Once those two screws are loosened, you'll simply lift and twist the mounting bracket to remove it from the canopy.
This fan features a slide-on mounting bracket for easy installation. The bracket has two keyhole slots that will align with the two screws in the outlet box. Simply align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws in the outlet box and then slide the hold in place before tightening. This is just a demonstration. To install the mounting bracket, begin by using a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen but not remove the two screws in the outlet box. Next, feed the house supply lines through the mounting bracket and align the slots of the mounting bracket with the screws that were loosened in the outlet box. Then slide the mounting bracket into place. Then, use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten both of the outlet box screws and secure the mounting bracket. Make sure that both screws are completely tightened. Before routing the wires and attaching the down rod, you'll need to use a flathead screwdriver to loosen but not remove the set screw on the motor collar. Next, gently pull the green ground cable from inside the ball and down rod assembly. Place the down rod through the canopy so that the largest opening is facing towards the ball. Next, place the decorative ring onto the down rod, making sure that the black side with the notches is facing towards the canopy. The last piece is the decorative motor collar cover. Place that onto the down rod so that the largest opening is facing towards the threaded end of the down rod. Then route the wires through the down rod so that the end exits through the ball side and gently pull the wires through until the down rod meets the motor collar. Note the holes in the end of the down rod and the holes in the motor collar. When attaching the down rod, you'll screw the down rod into the motor collar until the holes on the end of the down rod align with the holes in the motor collar. Once those holes are aligned, use the hanger pin from the hardware pack and insert that pin through the holes on the motor collar until it exits the opposite side. Secure the hanger pin by inserting the locking pin through the end of the hanger pin. Once that pin is set, use a flathead screwdriver to completely tighten the set screw on the motor collar. Once the set screw is tightened, slide the motor collar cover and the canopy down the down rod until it meets the motor housing. Now the fan is ready to be hung. Before hanging the fan, it's important to note the slot in the ball that will engage the tab in the mounting bracket. When hanging, you'll insert the ball into the mounting bracket and then rotate the fan assembly until you feel the slot engage the tab. This is just a close-up demonstration. To hang the fan, lift the assembly up to the ceiling, noting the location of the tab in the slot. Slide the ball into the mounting bracket, and then rotate the assembly until you feel that slot engage the tab in the mounting bracket. The fan will drop slightly when properly seated. When installing the receiver, you'll notice one side has two plugs. Those will connect to the fan wiring. The other side of the receiver has three wires that will connect to the house wiring. Make sure the flat side of the receiver is facing towards the ceiling, and then insert the receiver antenna end first through the mounting bracket so that it rests on top of the ball and down rod. Begin making the wire connections by connecting the small wire plug from the receiver to the small wire plug from the fan. Once that connection is made, move that wire out of the way and then connect the large wire plug from the receiver to the large wire plug from the fan. The plugs will snap together when properly connected. Next, take the green wires from the ball and down rod assembly, mounting bracket, and receiver, and twist those three wires together. Once those wires are connected, connect those wires with the bare copper house wire. This is the ground connection. Secure the connection using a plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Next, take the white wire from the receiver and twist that wire together with the white wire from the house supply lines. These are the neutral connections. Twist those two wires together and finish the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Finish the wiring by taking the black wire from the receiver and connecting that wire to the black wire from the house supply lines. This is the power connection. 
twist those two wires together and secure the connection using an included plastic wire nut and a piece of electrical tape. Once all the wire connections have been made, gently tuck the wires around the mounting bracket and into the outlet box to make room for the canopy to attach. The canopy attaches to the mounting bracket using two keyhole slots on either side of the canopy that will align with the two screws at the base of the mounting bracket. Align those holes with the screws in the mounting bracket and push the canopy up so the screws come through the keyhole slots and then twist to hold the canopy in place. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten those screws and secure the canopy. You can tilt the fan to make extra room for the screwdriver to access the screws. Make sure both screws are completely tight. To attach the Wi-Fi antenna to the ceiling, remove the adhesive backing from the double stick tape that's pre-installed on the Wi-Fi antenna. You can push the excess wire back into the canopy and then position the Wi-Fi antenna against the ceiling and press firmly to stick it to the ceiling. The decorative ring is magnetic. You just need to align the slots of the decorative ring with the two screws at the base of the canopy, and then slide the decorative ring up, and it will attach itself to the bottom of the canopy. To assemble the blades, you'll need the bag of blade attachment screws from the hardware pack. The blades are reversible, so choose the finish that you want and make sure that the opposite side is facing up. The blade arms have three posts that will align with the three holes at the end of the blades. Then align the screw holes of the blade with the posts on the blade arm. Press the blade arm and the blades together, and then using a blade attachment screw, start one screw in each hole. Once all three screws are started, use a Phillips head screwdriver to completely tighten all three screws. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. When attaching the blade assemblies to the fan, you'll notice an alignment post on the blade arm that will align with the long slot on the base of the motor. When attaching the blade assemblies, insert the alignment post into that long slot. The captive screws of the blade arm will be aligned with the screw holes in the base of the motor. To tighten the blade arm screws, insert a Phillips head screwdriver through the access slot on the black bracket on the base of the motor. Make sure both screws are completely tightened. Repeat this process for the four remaining blades. Make sure all blade arm screws are completely tightened before proceeding. The light kit pan attaches to the fan using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws on the black bracket at the base of the motor. Begin by removing and saving one of the three screws using a Phillips head screwdriver. Then loosen, but do not remove, the two remaining screws in the black bracket. Feed the wires from the fan through the center hole and align the keyhole slots of the light kit pan with those screws in the black bracket and then push up and twist to hold the light kit pan in place. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and a Phillips head screwdriver and insert the screw into the standard screw hole of the light kit pan. Completely tighten that screw and then tighten the two remaining screws in the keyhole slots. Make sure all three screws are completely tight. The LED light kit attaches to the fan in the same way, using two keyhole slots and one standard screw hole. These will align with the three screws in the light kit pan. Begin by first removing and saving one screw, and then loosening, but not removing, the two remaining screws in the light kit pan. Next, connect the LED module to the fan by inserting the plugs from the LED module into the wires from the fan. Connect the white wire from the LED module to the white wire from the fan and the black wire from the LED module to the blue wire from the fan. The plugs will snap together when properly inserted. Once the wire connections are made, tuck the wires up into the light kit pan and align the keyhole slots of the light kit with the two screws that were loosened in the light kit pan. Press up and twist to engage those two screws. Then use the screw that was removed and saved and insert that into the standard screw hole of the light kit and completely tighten using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once that screw is completely tightened, completely tighten the two remaining screws in the light kit pan. The light shade uses a twist lock system to connect to the fan. 
there are three flat sides on the light shade that will align with the three nubs inside the light kit pan. Align the flat sides of the light shade with the three nubs in the light kit pan, then press the light shade up and twist clockwise until tight. Before using the remote, you'll need to insert the batteries that were included. Slide the battery compartment cover off the back of the remote and then insert the batteries according to the diagram inside the battery compartment. Once the batteries are inserted, replace the battery cover by sliding it onto the back of the remote. This fan features a full featured remote control. Press the power button to turn the fan and light off. Press the power button again to turn the fan and light back on to its last settings. Press and hold this button for 5 seconds to activate the walk away time delay. The light will dim briefly 50% to let you know this feature is activated, and then the fan and light will turn off in about a minute. Press the fan speed button to cycle through the fan's 5 speeds, starting with high all the way to low. Press and release the light button to turn the light on or off. Press and hold the light button to cycle through the light's brightness settings. The light will cycle from bright to dim back to bright. Release the button when the desired level of brightness is achieved. Press and release the color temperature button to cycle through the light's six color temperature settings, ranging from 2700K warm white to 6500K daylight deluxe. Press and release the reverse button to change the fan's direction. The fan must be on and running before pressing this button. The fan will slow to a stop and then start back up in the opposite direction. To attach the wall cradle to the wall, begin by removing the screw cover by sliding it out of the wall cradle. Then choose a position on the wall where you'd like to store the remote when not in use. Use the included screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to attach the wall cradle to the wall. Make sure both screws are tight. You may want to use anchors that are also provided when attaching the wall cradle to the wall. Once the screws are tight, reinsert the screw cover into the slots of the wall cradle. When starting the fan, you may notice that the fan moves back and forth or seems to stutter before starting up. This is completely normal for a DC motor ceiling fan. This is just the magnetic poles in the DC motor aligning and starting the fan up. The remote comes paired with the ceiling fan from the factory, but if you have more than one remote control ceiling fan in the house, it may be necessary to change the frequency of the remote. To change the frequency, start with the power to the fan turned off at the breaker box or at the wall switch, and then change the position of the dip switch in the battery compartment of the remote. Return power to the fan at the breaker box and wall switch, and within 30 seconds, press and release the learn button in the battery compartment of the remote control. If pairing is successful, the fan's light will blink. Download the free Hubspace app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and follow the instructions in the app to register an account. Place the Hubspace card with the QR code that came with the remote on a flat surface. Then open up the app and press the plus button in the top right hand corner. This will bring up the option to add a device. Select add a device and have your phone pointed at that QR code to allow it to scan the code and set up the device. Then follow the prompts in the app to name the fan and select a location. Tap the next button and then enter your home network's credentials to connect your fan to your Wi-Fi network. Then tap connect to connect your fan to your Wi-Fi network. You'll receive the message in the app once the fan is connected. Select your fan from the app's home screen to bring up the control module. From here you can adjust the fan speed, the light color temperature, and the light brightness settings. Using the buttons at the bottom of the screen, you can set a schedule, a timer, or change the settings of your fan, such as your fan name and location. Press the orange hub space button at the bottom of the screen to easily integrate your fan with the voice assistant of your choosing. Then simply follow the on-screen prompts to complete the setup.
Once setup is complete, use the voice commands listed in your manual to control the fan. Congratulations, your ceiling fan installation is now complete. Time to sit back, relax with a nice tall beverage, and enjoy your new ceiling fan. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please click like and subscribe down below, and that'll help other people find it as well. And as we always say around here, keep it breezy.